This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Let's go through and look at another area of group accounts, which is looking at IFRS 11, so a new accounting standard, and joint arrangements. And joint arrangements exist whereby we have joint control. So we have two parties coming together. And those two parties, to keep it simple, could own 50-50 share okay, uh, of the entity or the enterprise or business that, that we are operating. So by having 50-50, that they have joint control. Uh, but in order for there to be joint control, there needs to be a legally binding document between the two parties that goes through there and says that we require the unanimous consent of both parties i.e we both need to come together and agree so if we both come together and agree something will get done about it and it will happen if we both come together and one party disagrees then nothing happens so we don't have control by ourselves we have joint control so that the two heads or maybe more if there's three parties or four parties all need to come together and agree on the decision if that's the case, we have joint control, we have unanimous consent, and there needs to be a legally binding document between the parties. There's nothing to say that there could be a legally binding document that says that two parties come together and have to have unanimous consent. And it doesn't necessarily then have to be a 50-50 ownership. It could be 60-40, 70-30, 80-20. It will all depend upon the investment that each party has brought to the table. But even the person that owns 25% of the venture could still have joint control if it requires unanimous consent of the other party that owns the 75%. But for simplicity now, just think about it as a 50-50 holding each and joint control. Okay. Uh, when we have a joint arrangement, there are two joint arrangements that we have. Uh, joint operations, so a J-O, and is it the... A JV, a joint venture. Uh, what is the difference? Uh, well, a joint operation tends to be like what we see with uh, airline companies and how, how they tend to operate. So say two airlines will come together, maybe one a European airline and one an American airline. And what will happen is that a passenger will book a ticket from a European destination to a destination somewhere in America. And the European airline will fly them from Europe to America. And then the passenger will get on another plane in America and then fly to their specific destination in America on an American plane. Now, what you have there essentially is a joint operation because the European company owns the European plane. Uh, the American company owns the American plane that the passenger has taken those two journeys on. So what you have there is two companies that have come together the European airline company and the American airline company to form a joint operation and a joint operation. There is no separate entity that is set up. But what you have there is that each party has the rights to the assets and obligations to the liabilities of the arrangement. So any assets that are shared within the arrangement. Uh, will be shared, but any of your own assets remain on your own financial statements. So things such as the, the aeroplane uh, will be there on the European set of financial statements uh, for the European airline company, and the American airline plane will, will be on the American set of financial statements. But any assets that we have invested in together, uh, I don't know, maybe they've, they've gone through and refurbished the airports and jointly invested within that, uh, so maybe that the check-in terminal facilities, uh, maybe passport control, security, uh, maybe the, the baggage carousels, maybe they have gone through there and jointly invested within those. And therefore you would split according to the percentages, uh, those assets of the joint operation. Uh, key bit is that, as I said, uh, that you've got the rights of the assets, uh, the obligation to the liability. And therefore, there is no separate entity that is usually set up. OK, so the two airline companies exist totally separately. The issue is 
you're a passenger. You've flown from a European city to an American city using two airlines. How do we go through there and separate the revenues? How do we separate the costs? How do we split out the assets and how do we split out the liabilities? Uh, well, it's there. All you go through and do is you record your share of the arrangement assets and liabilities in your statement of financial position and your share of the revenue and costs in the statement of profit or loss. Okay, so if you own 50% of the joint operation, you will take 50% of the revenues and 50% of the costs. Any assets and liabilities that are shared, you will take 50% of those and put them into your statement of financial position. Uh, a joint venture is ever so slightly different because normally two parties or, or more come together and go through there and set up a separate joint venture company. And what you have there is you have not the rights to the individual assets or, or the obligations, but you have the rights to the net asset. So essentially, you have the net asset, which is equal to the equity. So you own the equity of that separate joint venture company. So there is a, a new joint venture company that is legally born. Uh, JV Co, if you so wish. And a good example there would be, say, Sony Ericsson in the real world. So you had Sony that were the, the pioneers at the time of everything to do with uh, music technology. Uh, you know, the, the Walkman, that's a long time ago, but, you know, uh, they knew a lot about music technology. And you had Ericsson and they were the telephone technology company. And they came together and formed Sony Ericsson which brought together the, the mobile phone technology, uh, the music technology to, to develop or begin to develop mobile phones that had the capacity uh, not just to take mobile phone calls, but also to play music. Uh, so that was a, a quite a famous joint venture that came together and we set up Sony Ericsson as a separate company. Uh, as we said, uh, the key bit then is the accounting. The accounting isn't very exciting. Uh, all you go through and do that is you look at a bit of equity accounting. So if you are one of the investing parties, you will take your share of the profit of that joint venture company in profit or loss. You don't take your share of the revenues, and your share of the costs like you do in the joint operation. You take your share of the profits or your share of the, the losses, don't we? Okay. And likewise, with the investment, instead of it being an investment in associate, you have an investment in joint venture which is your cost, plus your share of the post acquisition profit of the joint venture. OK, so computation wise, we've already seen, haven't we, how to equity accounts. So the joint venture accounting is fine. It's the joint operation one that we need to look at and to investigate. So if you have a look at the bottom of the page there, uh, it says example joint operation. It says, show how Lion would account for the above in its consolidated financial statements. So position statement, performance statement for the year ended 31st of December 20x5. Uh, here it says we have a 40% share of a joint operation. And that joint operation is a natural gas station. So it looks like the parties have come together and they have decided to construct a natural gas station together and therefore you get your rights to the assets and the obligation to the liabilities and you will record your share will it be of the revenue and of the costs incurred within this construction of the natural gas station uh, it goes on to tell us there the natural gas station costs 15 million to construct so if we're Lyon or Lyon, whichever you prefer to call it, uh, they will take their 40% share of that 15 million, won't they? Which I think is £6 million. Uh, so that's what they would show on their statement of financial position. Uh, it was completed on the 1st of January 20x5 to the start of the year. Remember, we depreciate the asset from when it's finished and ready for use, which is there, the 1st of January. And its useful life is estimated, is it there, at 10 years. So we will need to record our share of the assets at six million and then depreciate it over, is it the 10 years? Uh, it says in the year gas for the direct cost of 22 million was sold for 30 
So we need to take our share of the costs, our share of the revenues, and also as well it tells us the joint arrangement included operating costs of 1.5 million in the year. Uh, as we'd expect from a joint operation, assets, liabilities, revenue and costs are apportioned on the basis of the shareholding. So it's a 40% shareholding, so we will apportion it 40%. Like we said in the introduction, it doesn't have to be 50-50. Uh, here it will be 40 and 60, but there will be a legally a binding agreement that says we have to have unanimous consent. It goes on to tell us that at the bottom, uh, Leon has contributed and accounted for its share of the construction cost paying the 6 million. So they've credited bank with 6 million because that's what they paid and debited the property, plant and equipment. And they don't seem to have done anything else. It says the revenue and costs are receivable and payable by the other joint operator who settles amounts outstanding with Leon after the year end. So we'll, we'll see that in a bit more detail, what that necessarily means as, as we go through and finish things off afterwards. Uh, but what you've got there is if we think about things from a statement of profit or loss perspective, uh, on the revenue, if we're looking here at Leon, we need to take our share. Is it 40% of the revenue? So 40% of the 30 million. So is that the at 12 million and um, we'll stick to our usual is it the thousands of dollars uh the costs what do we have uh well the operating costs are 40 percent of the 22 so is that the direct operating cost that we have is that eight thousand eight hundred and then the other costs that we had, we were told that they were 1,500, weren't they? 40% uh, of that gives me 600. Uh, the depreciation. Well, we have an asset. We've recorded our share of it, which is 6,000. Divide that by the 10 years. Does that give me another 600? If we total that up, that is there, is it as 2,800? And that there is the profit that goes in through the revenue and all the various costs into Leon's statement of profit or loss. In terms of the statement of financial position of Leon, uh, you've got, is it your property, plant and equipment? So your property, plant and equipment, we recorded our share, is it at six? And then we have depreciated it by 600, which gives me 5,400. And then we said we would talk, wouldn't we, about that fancy little bit of information at the bottom. Uh, the revenue and costs are receivable and payable by the other joint operator uh, who settles the amount outstanding with Leon after the year end. So the amount outstanding are the fact here that, that what we'll have gone through and done overall net, we have credited Leon's statement of profit or loss, haven't we? Okay, uh, because that's the, the net profit from the operation that, that we will record. The other side of the entry there is if it is going to be settled by the other joint operator is that we need to go through there, don't we, and debit a receivable. That is the amount there that we are due from the other person as part of the joint operation. So we're crediting our profits. Obviously, you would do that all on a line by line basis with the different amounts and then you would debit your receivable. OK, there you have it. It, it shouldn't get much more tricky than that. Uh, but have a go at the practice questions within the question bank 
and see how you get on. If you get stuck, you know where we are. Keep working hard and I'll see you all in the next session.